Today I'm building a modern media console with these carved plywood sliding doors. I'm always intrigued with the versatility of plywood and carving through the different layers is a technique that I've seen and I've been wanting to try. This project was a lot of fun to build and you might even say it put a smile on my face. So far I'm breaking down a 5x5 sheet of 3 quarter inch Baltic birch into panels for the cabinet and I initially cut these a bit oversized. I'll cut them down to their final dimensions a little bit later on. Next I cut a panel to use for the doors and drew a rough outline of the pattern I wanted to carve. I'm just using an angle grinder and a flap disc, but you'll see that I ran into a little issue here as I started carving. The layers of this particular panel had very little variance in shade and wasn't giving me the contrast and the look that I was going for. Luckily, I had this sheet of half inch Baltic birch plywood just laying around the shop. And as you can see, the layers contrast much better. Now I'm cutting down panels to become the sides of the cabinet and the three partitions. Again, I cut them oversized first and now I'm cutting them all to their final depth to get consistent sizing. For these side panels of the cabinet, I'm able to set my table saw to 45 degrees and sneak up on this cut. The longer panels of the cabinet were too large to cut on my table saw or a miter saw, so I'm gonna use a track saw to get these done. Now I'll move on to working on the doors, and first up is sanding them before I pour the epoxy. I just got this sander from Surf Prep, which has this foam pad that allows me to get down into the contours of these carved sections. This right here was a huge time saver, and I'm a big fan of this Surf Prep sander. I'll link it and everything else I use down below. The plan is to cut out a two inch river into the panels, and you can't see it, but I'm totally using air quotes when I say river. I use this little pencil jig to draw the shape with consistent spacing, and then I'll cut that out over on my bandsaw. This is the quarter inch panel that these carved panels will get glued to, and this is actually what's gonna slide into the grooves that I'll cut a little bit later on. These panels are glued in sets, so there'll be about a quarter inch reveal between those carved panels and the actual cabinet itself. Onto the epoxy pour and I'm gonna use Total Boat Stick Set Epoxy. This isn't because I need to do a deep pour. It ended up only being about 3 16ths of an inch deep. I did this because I wanted a crystal clear epoxy without any potential bubbles. And the longer open time of the Thick Set Epoxy gives those bubbles time to work their way out of the pour. I 
I mixed in a green and a blue liquid pigment and I got these from Total Boat as well. And then I poured each color from opposite ends, allowing them to mix in the middle. I left the epoxy to cure for 48 hours and got back to working on the cabinet. First, I'm gonna cut in the dados for the partitions and these are stop dados, meaning the partition will sit back from the edge and hide the slots that I'm cutting. For the face frame and the edge banding for the partitions and the shelves, I'm using some hardwood birch, which is gonna match the Baltic birch plywood that I'm using on this project. After milling the boards and getting it to a final thickness of three quarters of an inch, I cut this board into half inch strips. I cut each piece a bit oversized and then glued them onto the front of the partitions using these Rockler bandy clamps. And this is the perfect thing to use for this job. You can use tape, but these bandy clamps work really well. Next up, I'm cutting in the rabbit that's gonna receive the quarter inch back panel. The router bit leaves a bit of a radius where the dado stops, so I just used a chisel to square those up. Before I can get final dimensions for the partitions, I need to dry fit the cabinet together, and to assemble this piece, I'm gonna use dominoes. With the cabinet all dry assembled, I could use a flush trim saw to cut off the excess from the edge banding before cutting the partitions to fit. I also had to notch out the front of the panels in order to fit in the dados. This has the panel extend over where the dado stops and that's gonna hide the seam. Before I can assemble the cabinet, I need to cut in the quarter inch grooves for the door panels. These are cut about a half inch deep on the top and a quarter inch deep on the bottom, and this allows me to insert the doors after the cabinet is put together. Once the cabinet was glued together, I used these corner clamps to make sure everything stayed square. And I was actually pretty surprised how square they were after cutting half the bevels with just the track saw. Last, I glued in the partitions and let this sit overnight. I did end up with some tiny gaps on a few of the corners and I filled these with wood glue and then rubbed in the sawdust that was left over from cutting the dados. Next, I used a razor blade to scrape away the excess and this hid those gaps pretty well. At this point, the epoxy had cured thoroughly and I could cut the doors into four door panels. I put some tape over the epoxy to prevent chip out and then cut them on my Rockler crosscut sled.
To keep with the modern look of this media console, I'm just making a simple base that will be three inches tall and inset from the ends about eight inches. And just like the cabinet, the base is put together with 45 degree miters and dominoes with one center stretcher for added support. My original plan called for a shelf on either end installed with stop dados just like the partitions, but I decided instead just to use shelf pins, which is gonna allow those shelves to be removable and because this is also a lot easier to do. I went back and forth on which direction to go, whether I should stain the cabinet black or just leave it natural. The original plan called for staining the cabinet black with India ink, and I went ahead and went this direction, but I was really torn. Let me know down in the comments below if you like the black stain or if I should have left the cabinet a natural color. Next, I cut the quarter inch plywood for the backboard and then used a Forstner bit and this drill guide to cut in simple door pulls on each one of the doors. For the finish, I'm gonna use shellac, and I applied this to the door and then to the rest of the cabinet after installing the face frame. I'm really happy with the way this media console turned out. It really does make me happy. I wanna give a shout out to the Instagram profile, Ben et Manu. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. But that's where I first saw the carved plywood and that's where I got inspired to build a piece using that technique. I also wanna thank Rockler and Total Boat for sponsoring this video. I've got everything I use linked down below. A special thanks to my Patreon supporters, including my top patrons, Matt Varghese, David Britton, DFM Toolworks, Maker's Best Friend, and Lex the Historian. You can find information about supporting me on Patreon and how to join the JB Tribe down below. All right, thanks for checking this one out, and I'll see you back here next time.